Welcome to another episode of the award-winning podcast, Not Too Deep. I'm your host, Grace Helbig. This is a very exciting episode. We have a repeat guest. It is now the independent content creator, Lily Marston. You might know her from Clever TV, from Beauty Break, from just, you know, a cog in the system over at Defy Media. I have been through the situation that has been happening over there. It's very controversial. It's very interesting. It's goofy. It's silly. And you know what? She's come out on the other side, and I'm so excited to talk to her about it. You'll really like this episode. Um, also, I learned a horrendous um, tip about SpaghettiOs. So please watch with caution. Enjoy this episode of Not Too Deep with Lily Marston. Not, not too deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by our good buddies at Squarespace. Turn your great idea into a reality with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're showcasing your work or selling products of any kind. With beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything, you can easily make a beautiful website yourself. And if you do get stuck, Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support is there to help. Head to squarespace.com slash grace for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code grace to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Lily Marston Hello. is back with us on another episode of Not Too Deep, and this time, very different circumstances. I know. I feel like I've watched this, um, you know, you came on here, and then you went into a cocoon, and now you're a butterfly <gasps> coming back to Not Too Deep. I don't know if I'd say butterfly, maybe like a half-dead moth. But, yeah, um... hey, that's how we all feel. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited to talk to you, because you can finally kind of talk without um, constraints. I know. It, does that feel weird and It does. Cool? Like, I still feel like I'm like, am I allowed to say that? And it's like, nothing's like, also, I mean, no, it's not true. I was going to say, nothing's like bad, but like. Well, the thing is. Uh, I think it's just a very different perspective when you're in mm-hmm. a situation like that than like the viewers see. Like, they think we all just like are happy all the time. A hundred percent. And I've been through something so similar um, with a company called My Damn Channel, which is the place that I actually met Jack Ferry. Um, That's right director, producer extraordinaire of the Not Too Deep podcast. And we had a similar situation with this company that was like really taking advantage of a lot of the talent and then wasn't negotiating. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, which is like literally back. I mean, that's not how we met because we met at VidCon when I was like wasted. And And I was confused. She like comes up to me. She's like, oh, my God, like you dyed your hair or something. I'm like, you know, I I was like, I've been watching Megan (laughs) Ranks' story. I I know who you are. I've been watching. I've been like in love with like a weirdo in the background that's like editing all of her videos. No, but um, then I had reached out because I knew you had gone through the same scenario and we got yeah. drinks like, it was probably like two years ago. Yeah, we got drinks and this I is how- I go back into the DMs and it's like me being like, hypothetically, could I ask you, uh, could I like pick your brain on just totally for no reason, just, <laughs> what, just throwing it out there. I just, I would have no reason for this information, but I just- I was I'm like, curious. oh, corporation taking advantage of you? Yeah, okay. I have some insight into this for sure as a got content to, creator. Like, five hours getting so drunk. Oh, we got so drunk at Barney's Beanery and this is like, of I drove my we car went. there thinking like, we're just going to have like a business drink. <laughs> Drink. And then, like, cut to five hours later, being like, "I'll come back for my car. Yeah. I, if I get a ticket, I got a ticket. It's fine." And I think the funny thing too is that Barney's Beanery was in West Hollywood, but it's like the straightest bar in like the gayest neighborhood in LA. And but then you everyone and I, thought we were on a date. Yeah, you and we were both wearing flannels. <laughs> we were both just wearing like the <laughs> most masculine clothes ever. And at one point, we just looked at each other like, "All of these frat boys think that we're on no, a date right now." Some guy came up because it was loud, and we. We were like having like very serious yes. conversations and it, it started with like oh like clever my damn channel yeah. and then it was like so when I was 10 well, right <laughs> it's like now we're friends Let's so start we're, like friends. we were like leaning in on like a yeah. booth that was kind of far like you're sitting further away than like to have like a relatively yeah. intimate conversation yes. I just remember a guy comes up and he goes like wow, you guys seem really close. Or he, <laughs> oh said, he made some like weird comment, like, where did you guys meet? Okay. And then it was like even weirder because we were and it like, was clearly uh, a guy coming up to hit on us. And both of us just looked at him like cats. And we're like, like <laughs> get away. How dare you interrupt us. <laughs> yeah. but I just remember him being like, oh, like, where'd you guys meet? Like, you, you seem to like really know each other really well. And we're like, uh, we met on the internet. <laughs> And also, I feel like he could hear our eye rolls of being like, we don't want any of this. Mine are pretty loud. Uh, It was really fun. Now, cut to two years later. And here we are. Here you are. Um, (laughs) For those cheers, hey, it's a Thursday in LA and it's raining, so. 
<laughs> like I need an excuse to have yeah, a like, That's up. the reason. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so for people that don't know, how do you summarize the um, situation that's happening right now? I know you've talked about it like <sighs> ad nauseum with a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, um, me uninvolved from the situation, what happened was Defy is the parent company that owned Clever and Smosh and... Mm-hmm. Used to own Screen Junkies, Ami. So it was a media company that owned like several different, very successful properties. Right. So when I first started working at Clever, Alloy Digital owned it. Mm-hmm. And that was the parent company. But then I think it was only like a year or two went by before then Alloy Digital merged with Break.com. Okay. Which was like, now looking back, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> it's like this kind of like Curious. very raunchy, like, ugh. Nine hottest girls in bikinis uh, in like hot a, tubs. It's like, like a barstool it's like sports, one hundred percent. But okay. like uh, even more, yeah. I think like girls gone wild. <laughs> yes. Er. Like I had uh, our ads were running on. They were like testing. Okay overlay ads on websites one time and I got a text from a guy that I went to college with and he goes don't judge me for like this is what I was looking up but it's a (laughs) screenshot and it's like 10 best brothels in Thailand and it's just (laughs) my face (laughs) playing over it and I'm like Cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, yep. That's like, don't let me. I'm, just, I'm thriving out here in right. LA. Thanks. But he was, and he was like, "Is there something you need to tell me?" And I'm like, "Oh my god." And he's like, I'm "Like, go watch the videos. I'm actually." And it's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> like, putting glitter all over our hair. <laughs> <laughs> but um, testing flash so, tattoos. Right. Yeah. So long story short, uh, the parent company, despite all of the channels doing well, like I mm-hmm. think Clever Style and Smosh specifically and Clever News, we're all like making money. No, you guys were, from what I estimated, like you guys were on the upward trajectory. Well, and like for a while, I feel like we had kind of plateaued and like the views definitely weren't like, they weren't how they were like a few years ago when Beauty Break first blew up, where it's sure. like we would like half straighten Jocelyn's hair and it would get right. a million views in two days. And we're like, but I also oh think God. that's a little bit par for the course of the YouTube platform exactly, in the algorithm general and everything. Yeah. yeah. So things I thought like kind of maybe like started not doing that great. So it wasn't like we were getting like pats on the back every single day for sure. like, oh my God, you're getting such great views. But also the monetization has changed. And one thing that I think is very crucial to mention is we never had access. I didn't see what the videos were making. So it's like, I can estimate what it could be making, but the CPMs per video totally changed. See, that's the craziest thing. Cause when I was doing daily grace for my damn channel, I could see the back. I don't know which was worse. Uh, I don't know either. (laughs) Both are so soul crushing, but at least I was like just blissfully ignorant. And when I say blissfully, like not at all, but it was, and this was like before brand deals were a big thing before like CPMs were a different, you know, ratio. And I was saying that they were making like five, six, seven times more than they were paying me. And I was just like defeated. I think this. I even knew like, cause back in the day it was pretty much like for a million views, you get a thousand dollars. Right. And so for the, for the amount of content that was being produced, y- it was, yeah, it didn't fully make uh, sense to me because I never bothered myself with learning mm-hmm. about the financial end because I didn't so have to because it didn't matter. I did, though, because I no, was so pissed. <laughs> yeah, but also I think things have become so public in the yeah. way that we all... There weren't articles that you could Google and like look, do research. Right, so even now more than ever, you can kind of guesstimate um, how much money um, a YouTuber or a company is getting based on the number of views that they're getting and the yeah. number of ad placements that they're having, exactly. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, so um, I don't even know where, like, there's so many angles to the story. But basically, the company, parent company, ran out of money from poor business decisions that mm -hmm. were, like, unrelated to the YouTube channels. I also don't think that all production costs and everything were managed totally in the smartest way. But, like... It's, our shoots definitely weren't taking up the money that bankrupt the company. No, like, you guys we barely, were I, like, like never string. even would. They'd be like, oh, what do you want from like, it would be like some like salad place. And I'd be like, oh, it's fine. I'll buy my own lunch. Like that's, that's how, nuts. like literally people like wouldn't even get lunch on branded shoots sometimes. Yeah. So to find out then that they, I think I've heard different numbers, but I've heard like 10 million, I've heard 30 million. And then the, they were stealing it from the network Partners too is ridiculous, and yeah. then that I had been negotiating a contract to be part of the network oh, God. when they hadn't paid people in a couple months, and I'm like, so why were you? Yeah, 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 it's all shady business deals. It's all very confusing, and it's just weird to me because when this happened, you know, at the company Jack and I worked for, it was that's f- six years ago. So you would think that this sort of thing would be like figured I mean, out. And I'm not super surprised, even, and everyone's like, oh, it kind of almost 
because in my video was like, what happened in five? And it was also like why I left because right. I left before it all. Well, happened. that's the craziest <laughs> thing. I've been trying to do it for yeah, a long time. Since the two years ago that we first got exactly. drinks, you had already like had a seed planted. And that, after like, we had even gotten drinks that original time, I had I did renew my contract. And right. I know in Shane's video, he talks about like telling me how much Clever Style was making that right, I was right, like, right. what are you talking about? And yeah, that my a- contract's coming up. And I know he was like very disappointed in me that I did sign it. But well, I what hadn't been, options when I had been time. making any money before, so I didn't have any savings. So right. it wasn't like I, and it's not like you start a YouTube channel and instantly that month you're like suddenly getting all these checks. It's like, even no. if you were getting a bunch of deals and doing well, you're not going to see the money for a couple months at least. Right. So I'm like, who's paying my rent in the meantime, because I'm living paycheck to paycheck. <laughs> yeah. No, that's the thing that people don't see, which I think is so fascinating right now. Cause you, as it's so hard to explain to an audience right now, the financials, of YouTube, nor do you really want to explain the financials of YouTube, but there's been so many salacious articles and some like conversations about YouTubers make millions of dollars whenever they like post anything. Did and it's you like, see that there's a website that has my net worth listed at $11.5 million? I <sighs> think you, then I was like, nice. I was like <gasps> not <laughs> even the point five, drink. not even what ha- of the point five. <laughs> like, I don't understand. What are they basing this on? I don't know if that was maybe like taking like all of the Clever channels and like and what And you're like the president of Clever? I guess. I don't know. I, it's very confusing. That's insane. Yeah, there's a lot of... Um, for lack of a better word, not f- oh, fake news, but like false information out there about like YouTubers and the the financial situations that everyone is in. Well, it's there's no secret that you can make money, but it's like also not just like you suddenly sign up for a YouTube channel and you well, have a no, million dollars. There's no guarantees, right? I think the scariest thing, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it. For me, when I left Daily Grace and I started my own channel, I was really terrified, but I had no other choice. Mm-hmm. Like I really had no other choice. And I was like trying to do other things at the same time. So I felt like I had some other stuff going on if starting a new YouTube channel was a complete flop because I had no idea. I had no <laughs> Literally, like, like the same thing I've said. Well, that's yeah. And so I'm curious to feel like to hear how you felt like going through that because one, you are Lily. You're not clever, so they can't. I was like, Where is this going? No, they I'm can't. Like, right <laughs> they and that's what some people, like people, you know, pep talk me about when I was going through it. They're like, "You're." They have Daily Grace, sure, but they don't have Grace Helbig. Like, you are your own personality. Like the audience that is signed up to watch your videos, watch yeah. for you, not for this company. And so I'm sure there's a ton of like dread and anxiety around like breaking off and like how does that work for you? So it was hard because also. I was negotiating my contract, so I was planning on, they had agreed that they were going to give me ownership of my channel back. Mm -hmm. So I knew I would be starting with at least a jump start. It had like 260,000 subscribers from when I launched it, when Shane helped me like two, two and a half years ago. How chivalrous of them to allow you your channel back. (laughs) Exactly. So, and I, and I had gone in when I told them I was leaving and I was like, look, I don't think that we're ever going to negotiate a contract full time exclusively that I'm going to be happy with. So like, I don't want to waste my money on a lawyer, to be honest. Yeah. And I have been wanting to do my channel. Like I've literally been begging them for it for Mm -hmm. years. And it's like had several conversations that always were like, yeah, 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 you'll, you'll get it. But it just like never actually went through the actual process of doing it. So then I knew I was getting that back, but then the catch was that I had to join the network, which was exactly what they did See, at Ryland. I had no idea that Defy was an MCN as well. I, I thought, didn't either until when I, Ryland, honestly. Yeah, when I found and out I that like, six and a half years. Lisa Schwartz and Ryland and all these people were oh. like with them, I had no idea. So that's the thing is I didn't even really know that until randomly it would be like, oh, this person in the network. And that's like how we started hanging out with Adeline. Oh, and we're okay. like, wait, how long has she been in this network? Why haven't we met her sooner? And like gotcha. stuff like that. So then... I, but then there's people in it like Lisa and Matt Pat that I'm like, I didn't even know that they. Oh, Matt Pat's in it too? Yeah. <laughs> God, this goes deeper. Yeah. And he used to work for Defy as like a consultant too. Wow. Like he used to literally come into our meetings and be like, this is what you should title your clever videos. Whoa. <laughs> he's a genius. He's the nicest human yeah. of all time. Um, that's so nuts to me. Yeah. So, okay. Then, so you, so graciously, they give you your channel back. So then it was that I had to still join the network and Mm. I did have a manager friend to help me negotiate that because I don't have a manager and I have a lawyer, but like, 
but the, the lawyer is negotiating what you tell them to negotiate. Right. So. I think the really quick like piece of advice to anyone that this resonates with or anyone that's looking to get in entertainment, like one thing that you do amazingly is that you ask questions to all your friends that have any sort of like connection to anything that you well, might not know about. There's also like no one else has the answers. So it's right. like if you have friends that are in the space, they've definitely gone through the same stuff. And yeah. They're willing to tell you because you don't want your friend to get screwed up. No, because it sucks when you get screwed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then... So you had to put your channel with their network. Oh, but so then I had gone into this meeting. I was like, hey, I'm leaving. Like, yeah. you knew this was coming. I've been literally like, I've cried begging for it like a year earlier. And this is so insane because you went from being behind the camera to like what Shane said in Ryland's video, being the face of this company. An accident. Right. You and Jocelyn and Aaron like just kind of organically became these like featured creators on the face of Beauty Break and like, Clever. Mm, and The term featured the creators makes me laugh because this year we finally got featured creators. <laughs> I was like, but now it's going to be gone forever. Now it's not. It's like, I should still I'll put that badge in a shadow oh, box. God. I mean, if you want to use VidCon as a funeral for Clever, I'm down to like hold services. <laughs> like everyone has to wear black to a meet and greet. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's so... But yeah, no, it was like, I was always... And people were like, what? what did you want to do? I'm like, I don't know. I just like wanted to work in some kind of video. And then I was like, that somehow I ended up finding myself making a show that was a makeup tutorial show that mm -hmm. was horrible. I don't know anything about makeup. Megan didn't know anything about makeup. It was a disaster. And I was like, let's stop lying to everyone. Why am I? <laughs> no one wants the show. I don't want it. The audience doesn't want it. You guys don't want it. Why are you making me make it every day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it just like organically blew up. And it's very much, we've always said it's because we're all just like actually friends. And I. Yeah, the chemistry isn't fake. Well, and then I started editing it, which I won't even say it's like, I'm not like. I mean, I would like think I'm a good editor. You're an amazing editor. And also people don't realize I edit my own videos and it's like a tenth of what you do to edit beauty break videos because it's what people don't know. There's like three different cameras in that studio. Oh, there's all the mics. But it's like, sync. That's the last of my concerns. It's more that I think what people don't realize is that editing is producing it. Yeah. So it's like what we didn't have was were people that could edit it. And mm -hmm. then I would watch it and I'm like, I don't even know what notes to give you. But like, it's not that's not it. Right, right, right. <laughs> so then I'm like, it's easier for me to just go in and do it rather than be like, cut these two seconds and have that note like 80 times because they don't know how to do jump cuts. Right, right, right. And so you're doing, not only are you being in front of the camera now, you're producing, coming up with the whole like, what is this video concept? Well, and then actually editing it. But also I would say the producing and the editing very much is just like my sense of humor. Right. Which is very parallel with all of the other girls that I work with sense of humor. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like everything just felt very normal because yeah. it was like what we would actually be joking around about. And also stuff that you guys would want to watch if you weren't in that video. Exactly. Because that was my whole thing. I was like, no one wants to watch this. Why are we making it? Like, yeah. Why don't we want to, why don't we make something that people do want? That is more and realistic. And I don't want to stab my eyes out for making. <laughs> yeah. Just stab your eyes out with whatever, like, like new watching Megan do like, this is how you get Lord's makeup. I'm like, <laughs> First of all, does anyone want Lord's makeup? Does Lord wear makeup? She I didn't... used to have a very dark, bold lip. Oh, okay. I guess I missed that. <laughs> Sponsored well, by Cover Girl. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. So I'm glad that you guys evolved it. Um, do you, are you guys working to get Beauty Break back? I think I saw that in like your mukbang with Jocelyn. I, I mean, the thing is, is a lot of people are like, can't you just do Beauty Break in your living room? Can't yeah. you do like, uh, you could just like take the table. Literally, Jocelyn did take the table to hold on in case oh, I we know. Need, like the office closed or something. That video of her coming back with her car full of her stuff. The love sack. I'm so mad. Mine's still there. It's and you still need to get back. Does anyone have a truck? <laughs> 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 um, no. So it was like. <sighs> so beauty break is something like. Oh, but well, you guys can I was do. Like, I, beauty break was not reinventing the wheel. Literally, it's like I kind of. It became the show that was like kind of the Lily and Jocelyn trying yeah. show. Like it's not like- Which is a great alternative title that exactly. I think you should take and make oh, on well, your we own. Were, we've also uh, discussed Beauty Paws and um, yep. Broken <laughs> <laughs> Beauty Recess, Broken Beauty, Beauty uh, Excursion. Uh, I, yeah, Glamour Recess, yeah. <laughs> all these things. But like uh, uh, what I was saying in the video at one point, I'm like at the end of the day, I'm not, I didn't want to say it like, yeah, legally be like, we're stealing beauty. But Beauty Break doesn't even have a format. It's literally us trying things. Yeah. And I, it's just me editing it. So I'm not editing it in a specific way. I'm just like right. putting the footage together. So that's, like, there's not, that's not really a show. It's like kind of like everything I'm going to do is kind of. Yeah. If we're trying out beauty products or I always like would loose, like be like airplane pillows. 
so you could get your beauty sleep. Like, oh, it's just like very much forcing it. I never wanted it to be a beauty show. I would have rather it been like a good mythical morning kind of thing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I can see that. But it didn't. And then. Well, there's now there's more than enough time to make that happen. That's what happened when we I left Daily Grace. It was like, I can't do sexy Friday. Okay, how about like sensual Thursday? (laughs) What are the legal terms that I can say? And one thing that was always big with Clever, um, and I think to find in general, because like Smosh too, is that they needed shows. Yeah. Like you had to have shows. And Interesting. Was like, at first it was like the show was just running indefinitely. But yeah. then it would be like, well, we have to have shows and seasons and arcs and they oh, have to weird. have. And it was just so like. They're making what? like traditional TV. And it wasn't. And yeah. it was just like, no, but like, can't we just make this one really fast? Yeah. Like, like, like people want better. this right now. And then now more recently, before everything happened, it started getting like all of the trending stuff was like, yeah. Oh, you should hop on this. You should do it. Like we had mm-hmm. a flex show where we could just like do kind of anything. Right, right, right. But so I'm not really planning on making like too many like shows. Mm-hmm. I think there's a few things that have like a theme that's consistent enough that I'll like have it be like a recurring segment. A but gimmick. I don't think you pigeonholing yourself into like, yeah. I have this show every Thursday and I have to make sure the topic fits. And yeah. Everything. I'd Nothing. rather just have it be like a free for all. Uh, I think that's great. Okay. We're gonna take a quick break. When we get back, I have a couple more questions for you and then we have a billion Twitter <laughs> questions. So we'll be right back with the new free independent Lily Marston on Not Too Deep. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like I just got out of jail. Yeah, yeah, she's on parole. <laughs> this episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by our good buddies at Squarespace. The crowd goes wild. They've been sponsoring us for a long time. Uh, they've been very supportive, so please go support them because they are great. And also, <laughs> they can help you turn your dream into a reality. Would you look at that? They make it easier than ever for you to launch your passion project. If you're wanting to start a new business, if you want to showcase your work or publish your content, sell products or more, Squarespace is the tool for you. They've got beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks. So you can easily make a beautiful website yourself. And they have powerful e-commerce functionality that lets you sell anything online and analytics that help you grow your site in real time. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box, and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is super simple, and you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers millions of people, from designers to lawyers, artists to gamers, even restaurants and gyms, to turn great ideas into something real. And in fact, I use Squarespace regularly because I have a lot of uh, Squarespace websites, including the website for this very show, nottodeep.com. Oh, wow. This is a true friendship we have with Squarespace. And you can start a friendship with them too by going to squarespace.com slash grace for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code grace to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash grace, offer code grace. Not, not too deep. Squeezing in time for your family, work, and hitting the gym feels impossible. Something's got to give, and it's probably the gym. We all know it. But guess what? Body Boss can help unlock your dream body with the great 12-week Body Boss workout program, Guess what? My favorite part of this whole thing is you do it at home in just 24 minutes a day, three days a week. That's less than 90 minutes a week with no equipment, no subscription. Thanks to the hashtag boss effect or excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, you burn fat long after your workout. Plus, with caring pro coaches and a free Facebook group of supportive kick-ass women, you're never alone. So try Body Boss with this special offer just for our listeners and get 25% off the fitness guide at bodyboss.com slash grace order now and get free shipping and a money back guarantee this is the best deal ever guys get body boss for 25 percent off at bodyboss.com slash grace 12 weeks from now you'll thank yourself for starting now that's bodyboss.com slash grace okay Hello. we're back with lily marston okay one thing i want to ask going down memory lane um I'm so curious. I think I've heard a little bit about it in the videos that you and Jocelyn just recently posted, but I'd love to know your first impressions of meeting a couple different people at Clever. So first okay. of all, what was your first impression of meeting Jocelyn? So 
I started as an intern unpaid and I was like commuting from Thousand Oaks every day. Okay. And also when I graduated from college was when I got like such bad anxiety for mm-hmm. the first time. And it was like unbearable, which after I like even kind of knew them a little bit, literally have to thank them so much because I would go cry in their office because my like palms would be sweating. And uh, I'm like, I don't know what to do. And like, you can go home. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> um, like I, I, you don't have to time code that Bella Thorne interview right now. <laughs> you can do it later. But uh I just remember going in for the interview and being so nervous Mm -hmm. and I met, it was, um, another girl that worked there, Tatiana, that was the one interviewing me, but it was my friend Deidre that I went to high school with got me the interview Uh as if it was like a super hard interview to get. It's literally, (laughs) you just need to know who to email because otherwise it's not like we have like thousands of applicants. It was like two people and it's like, okay, here. Yeah. But, uh, so she gets me the interview. I see her when I go into the office, give her a hug. So the girl interviewing me sees that I give her a hug. Oh, so she's like, okay, she kind of So she literally, I sit down, she goes, okay, well, you're hired. Let's take it to her. And she like starts (laughs) doing me around. And then she introduces me. And I had like watched a bunch of the videos before. So I'd seen Dana and Jocelyn because they were the faces of the channel. Right. But I don't remember meeting Jocelyn as much as Dana because I think I just talked to Dana more. But Jocelyn was just like very much, oh my God. Just like <laughs> bouncing around. But I always tell her the biggest thing is they would film their teleprompter stories. And like now in the studio, they have like a walk and talk. So they have to like be fully clothed. Okay. These bitches always <laughs> went to work. They'd have like these really like, they have like the peplum, like satin shirts, yeah, yeah. On, like leather tops on and then like statement necklaces and then workout clothes. And just like God, red that's shoes. And I'm like, literally how I shot oh. every video. I and like, I'm like, hmm, I get it. Yeah. This makes sense. Everything's a lie. Yeah. But they were like so nice. Oh, and then Jocelyn would just like. She burped. I am. Whoops. She's human. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, no, I didn't. It was someone else. Uh, (laughs) I'm a girl. But uh, Jocelyn would like give me notes of stuff to do. And she would verbally tell me, but then she'd write them all down on post-it notes. And she has literally the worst handwriting you've ever (laughs) seen ever. And I I have really good handwriting. And I'm like, I'd look at it and I'm like, okay. Well, I don't need this. Like, <laughs> don't I? It'd be like, do step up research. Do uh, research on Bella Thor. Do research on this person. And it was just like, and then I would do it. But it's like, I had graduated college. And I was always, I went to Arizona State. So I feel like it wouldn't seem this way. But I was always good at school. Well, and I'm you're very, like, capable. And you know, you're a human. And you well, are smart. And you can figure things out. And my strong points, like research and like doing notes and mm-hmm. making them very like aesthetically pleasing yeah. is like, that is, I should, if that was a job, like I should be uh, someone that like writes, not actually writes them, but like organizes textbooks. There you go. Okay. <laughs> um, and she would give me these notes and, or like give me research projects and I'd bring it back to her and be like, here you go. This took me an hour, but it's like literally like anything you could possibly need yeah, on that yeah, person. Yeah. And she'd be like, what is this? <laughs> this is a lot. Because before people would be like, well, they were born this year. I'm like, right. in what world are you going to need to know their birth year yeah. in the interview about their movie? They're just printing out it's their like, Wikipedia when page. When they were three, they played this <laughs> game. I'm like, okay, that's, that's also irrelevant. They're five relevant. foot four inches tall. Who cares? So it's just like having the common sense to like understand what kind of questions they would ask in an interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, she was always just very grateful. And so like just happy all the time. Oh, well, see, that's what I'm so... Um, we wanted to have Jocelyn here today in this uh, podcast, but she's, she's busy. She's she's a busy independent lady now. And that's what I'm so excited about for her is that I think Jocelyn is an amazing host and she knows how to like turn on the facade of being a host. And I saw even in your very casual mukbang video that she has a hard time turning off oh my God, I make fun the of her interviewer so side that's of her so funny. that I'm so excited to get to know more about her without her having to feel like she's a host of something but she's also like that all the time anyway like right. obviously like we have a relationship where we're just like i don't think we have to ask each other stuff it's like when you're no. just when you just like tell them when you just have a conversation happening. with exactly. each other yeah but um with her i feel like anytime you hang out with her and someone new like we <laughs> We went to dinner with Elle Mills recently, uh, who which was like I am obsessed with. Okay, well, so flashback to VidCon this year, yeah. we had already been obsessed with her, and I'd show I had found one of her videos, and then was like, just the editing alone, I was like, this is amazing. It's so good. So it's I, like old John Hughes movies. That's what her inspiration is. Yeah, we asked her. Uh, well, Jocelyn asked her along with eighty other questions. But so we uh, sh- we met her at VidCon finally. I had like showed every single person in the office. I was like, have you seen who Elle Mills is? She's gonna be huge. And yeah. then like Casey Neistat starts shouting her out and yeah. she's just like blowing up and I'm like she's never gonna talk to us <laughs> <laughs> and then she followed us back on Twitter and then uh I think we met her at VidCon but like Jocelyn met her first and uh-huh. literally sent me a picture of the 
them together. And I was like in one of the SUVs, like on my way back from a panel, like having a panic attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like, open my phone. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, damn it. She got to meet Elle Mills and I didn't. And then I got to later in the day. I was uh, like, oh my God, I was so jealous when Jocelyn got to meet you. And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm literally fanning out. Like the 19 year old. And we're yeah, like, she's 19. We're with you. We're uh, old. That's the weird thing about VidCon is the only time that you can like get too excited about a teenager. I know. <laughs> but then even more excited, she reached out to us like the last, she came out to LA um, this past month and she reached out and was like, hey girls, we haven't really had much of a chance to like talk. So uh, I'd love to like grab dinner or something. And literally I had screenshotted it, was about to send it to Jocelyn <laughs> when my phone starts ringing and Jocelyn FaceTiming me being like, oh my God, Elle Mills wants to hang out with us. <laughs> <laughs> turned into two giant dorks literally and then we get there and we're like talking to her and she's like so cute just kind of like hi guys and Justin's like so we're obsessed with you you're a hero tell me about this <laughs> she's just like literally grilling her I was like, like hey uh, maybe like give her a second to yeah. breathe let's ease into this we're all humans here but that's a really great Justin she's impression like, what's your inspiration what do you want to do in life who would play you in a movie <laughs> how Justin doesn't have her own podcast blows my mind because she is like the perfect interview host. When we actually filmed a pilot of a podcast for Clever uh -huh. a while ago, and like it was kind of maybe going to happen, maybe not. Okay. But genuinely, it wasn't much before that, as usual. <laughs> and someone was like, yeah, that was really good. We got a lot of good feedback from like the uh -huh. like higher ups and stuff. And I was like, literally, it was just like, you can put me and Jocelyn in a room and be like, here are two topics talk and it's like six hours later yeah. we're still there we're like, <laughs> you're like, but did, we, did you know <laughs> did we talk about the two things that they set us out to talk about never uh no i'm so excited i've already been a super fan of like just the few videos that she's already put out and so i'm like very excited to see her be like less of host jocelyn and more of like maybe jocelyn jocelyn even though it's like might not be that different and i'm excited for her because i think she's gonna get to do both because yeah. she like even today she uploaded a video i was supposed to go with her but i had Oh, the Shay Mitchell? Yeah. Like, they were in a morgue? Yeah. And then, so I was going to vlog it, and it was going to be like, I brought Jocelyn, like, I brought uh -huh. my best friend to the morgue or something. And then I had stayed up all night editing our buck bangs, and then was like, That's I great. can't go. <laughs> all good, though. Um, okay. But so she's going to do interviews and stuff, too. That's great. And then she's also the vlog content. And, like, great at that. I think that's going to be a really wonderful balance for her channel. Um, okay, what was your first impression of Erin when you met her? I've tried to think of this before, and it's hard because Aaron started originally as the movies host, and oh, okay. I did not work on the movies channel at all. Gotcha. But Lisa and I, who I think you've maybe met, yes. Um, so we, Lisa, who was like a producer off camera, yes. that she, you guys tried to wrangle on camera many times, she, and she was less <laughs> agreeable than I think you she were. She wants to be on camera. She just wasn't always down for what we were doing. I think she knew the character she was playing and the relationship of you guys that she was playing, like the straight girl of like, I don't want to do this, and you guys be like, why not? I wish I could say that was a character, but it's kind of actually, no, she's the sweetest. And literally she's like, oh, we're not friends. But then she's like, here's floor seats to Katy Perry for your birthday. And I'm like, oh, oh, who are you? That's but, so sweet. Um, so we always shared an office. She left like a year ago, I think, to okay. just pursue her own thing. But we always shared an office, like from when I was an intern. Oh, wow. So back in our old Hollywood office, we shared one and it was like, quote unquote, an office. But it was like, I'm trying to look in here for like size comparison. But it was about like the size a, of the kitchen. So it's like without a, the counters. So like a walk-in closet. It was a very. It was the closet where the servers were. Okay. So um, <laughs> we would sit at our two desks. And then we had a pillar in between us, and then there was this other desk next to like the very loud servers that were just like buzzing all day, <laughs> literally. And and wait, the servers were actually in there. I, I, this I is that not was, a joke. Oh, I thought 100 that was a joke. We were in a closet, <laughs> <laughs> and it had glass walls, so it didn't feel super claustrophobic. Oh, so it was good. like windows so that I could zoo. like see through to see Dana and Jocelyn uh -huh. from the other side, um, and then. Whenever we had a new person come and audition, they would like a new freelancer or something. They would uh -huh. come and they'd write their script in the office at the table behind us. Oh, so me and Lisa were always like, who is, like, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> You're like so judgy. And now it's so funny because so many people I know, like, like Tracy stuff. And right, like so yeah. many people that I'm like, oh, that's funny. Like, and I was just sitting there doing like my Bella Thorne research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so I kind of remember her coming in. And then I do know that she almost... Like, the style so, channel did exist originally. So Erin came in and was, like, writing her scripts near you. Yeah. Okay. So, but, like, we didn't really talk. Like, Lisa's not friendly anyway. And then I'm just like, <laughs> hey, I have such bad anxiety. My pops are sweating. And I'm going to break my mouth. <laughs> and um, I don't even know. Like, then she was auditioning just in general, like, mm -hmm. for 
a hosting position, but it used to be very much like per channel. Okay. So at first I think it was for movies and then our style host was leaving. Okay. And because she was like, no one watches this. I'm sick of killing myself. This is awful. <laughs> so then Aaron, always, she was kind of almost grooming Aaron to take over Clever Style. Gotcha. But then I don't think Aaron really wanted to because Clever Style was stupid and didn't, it literally would be like a thousand views a video. Oh, and it gotcha. was like, like fashion news, like, oh, like okay. red carpet outfit and about the designers and like, it, no, no one, one on YouTube really cares about that. So then I don't remember when it, like the decision got made, but it was like, okay, clever styles dead. Mm -hmm. And until then beauty break revived it later, like years later. Yeah. But, um, and then Aaron took over clever movies. Oh, interesting. So then she, and she like didn't know a lot about movies in the beginning. Yeah. So I was she, gonna like, say, was she a movie person? Like, I'm someone that someone mentions Marvel and I'm like, I can't even like, it makes my brain hurt even trying to understand <laughs> how everything's connected and how there's like universes and how the different companies. I have no and, idea. And, like, why are there so many Spider-Mans? I just don't understand. Yeah, I'm exactly the same. <laughs> she like learned all of that. And like, is like an expert now. And wow. I'm like, I, that's impressive in itself. Yeah. She's had a lot of weird jobs. So I feel like she's used to like really having to like step up like, and like just kind of throw herself into it. But like, it's a lot to memorize. And oh, she like never genuinely became like the clever movie is like resident expert. Oh, that's cool. Okay. What was your first impression of Jarrett Sleeper? Who is <laughs> <laughs> a favorite here no! on Not Too Deep. And I'm always like, it's so funny you ask that because no one ever has. Well, I'm so <laughs> I feel like I kind of want to start like this. And it's off, not what you would expect. Oh, I can't wait. I, I kind of want to start this like sub podcast that's just asking people that Jarrett has met what their first impressions oh are. Or were. just <laughs> other questions about interactions. Like, yeah, yeah, thing yeah, too. Yeah. OK, like well, fashion review, too. Because <laughs> Jarrett, I met Jarrett it was when a great he was panty pack um, collection. Yeah, when we were working on my music with the Fine Brothers, like years and years and years ago, that's when we first met each so other. So I've never seen that, but I do remember when he started, he all the comments were like, that's metal from my music. Yeah. yeah. And um, so we met there and he was like pursuing, you know, traditional acting. And so it was like me and like Jack's Films and a couple other like YouTubers, but then intermixed with a, like real actors. So it was like a weird hodgepodge, really fun. That's where Mitchell and Jared and I like first all met each other. Uh, How long ago was this? This was 2011, 2010, like eight years ago, seven years ago, because Mitchell played, a, they brought him on as a character that was punk, I think. He played punk. Um, and Jarrett played metal. And then Jarrett and I just punk? made. Yeah, oh, I think like they were punk. all music genres. I don't yeah, even think I, I was ever, idol. Like, I was pop music. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Jared was metal. And then I think he came on. Really I haven't online. seen the show I, in so oh long. Oh my god, I, is it still up? Can I go watch it after? <laughs> Probably. It's the Fine Brothers uh, I'm sure made it's it. Somewhere. It's somewhere on there. And but what I'm doing tonight. But then uh, Jared, like we were still friends, but he wasn't really in the YouTube space. But then the next thing I knew, he was like doing stuff but with Clever. Even still, he's like weirdly not and I don't I've always I he guess, such I don't a, know if I've ever really talked to him that specifically about but the, it's weird to me that he doesn't have his own channel because I feel like he knows he can't everyone. commit to it yeah. I think he I think he <laughs> has too many very, ideas yeah he's got too many ideas uh, his podcast my good bread brain is like really fantastic D well, how long was the episode you filmed with him three hours, three hours. Yeah, it was two and a half. <laughs> I went over okay. I was like wait Jared, I have to leave I kept looking at my phone and being like how many subtle things can like context clues can I give this <laughs> person before I go how long are we going to be recording for but that said Jared Sleeper has a really amazing <laughs> podcast called my good bad my good bad brain that's all about like his thoughts on like mental health and he has a lot of really in-depth conversations really in-depth conversations yes. it's the opposite of this it kind does of not, podcast you forget that you're filming it you forget because uh, also like, there's no cameras so there's, it's like he just it's like you're on his couch he gives you a microphone you sink into his couch wait, for like wait, four wait, hours this is, this is so funny though because when he got brought on it was him and Tracy got brought on to host right the new show totally clever and this is when they literally just a few months earlier had like canceled all programming on clever tv and taken dana and jocelyn off and we're like hey um you're gonna go on clever news now we don't need you anymore over here even though that was the channel that they grew from the ground up they cancel it and then they gave and then kingsley came in and he had right. a show he had like king of the it was, uh, drama king drama king yeah. so that was the only show on clever tv for a bit even mm. though that was like our biggest channel they like just wiped it clean they were like we're gonna start over and make it something different wow gave him the show and then they started totally clever right after which has had so many different identities i remember just seeing randomly like on some social media platform 
uh, Jarrett and Tracy just like on the street in Venice, like so soliciting was, like man on the street interviews. And I was like, what is this? But that's funny because that's how it ended. That oh, like really? makes sense to me. Because like it was them being like Tracy and Jarrett. It yeah. was like people didn't always, it didn't do that well because their humor is like too smart for a lot of people, I think. It's smart and dry. It and, was too over everyone's head. And, and it just, it made me sad that it didn't catch on because they're it's so It's a bummer. Great. Yeah, because they're so in on the joke with each other that it makes other people uncomfortable exactly. thinking that they're like fighting or something. It's like, yeah, confusing. But before that, it was like, kind of I almost feel like you probably did you come in for you came in for drama king I came in for drama king did you come in for like some like award show weird thing? I came in for Mamrie something I came in for something I I feel like it was with Aaron and someone else I remember coming in and being in a hot little box studio and um it was like a I forget exactly what, it, maybe for my first book or something. It was oh, like part of like this press, press like thing. thing then, yeah. yeah. And then I came in, it was like two girls. I've, it might it's have probably been, DHR. It might have been Aaron and Jocelyn, probably. to be fair. Um, and I remember not putting that together until I came back to do Kingsley's thing. And I was like, oh, this is the same place that I was in before. And then when I went down the wormhole of discovering Beauty Break a couple years ago and all that stuff, I was like, wait a minute. It's all wait, also, f- like the fog is lifting. This comes into play. Usually I can track it by like what color my hair was. <laughs> but um, Not to be so Tyler Oakley 2014. <laughs> oh my God, is that something? I was like, literally no. I'm like, well, my hair was orange. So that means it was probably the last time. Um, that... They started Jerry and Tracy. I don't think we're working. Oh, no, you were saying that you had gone down a wormhole and found Clever Style yeah. and you'd shouted us out in a video. And I think it was like maybe we'd met at VidCon. Yeah, but like, yeah. I started getting tweets that was like, oh, my God, Grace just called you guys out. Grace, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. And then I'm like at like a bachelorette party in Denver. And I was <laughs> so, so drunk. And I literally like look at my phone and say, what? I'm like at a bar and I'm like trying to listen to what you say in the video. And I'm like halfway <laughs> through. And it's literally I think you just are like, oh, what, what was it? I got obsessed with you guys. The 100th layer challenge. You oh, were like, like yeah. reviewing people's or something. You're like, the clever girls did it. And we're like, <gasps> I got obsessed. I went down a full wormhole in one of my um, states of like depression where I go, I don't need to get on my bed for a couple of weeks. Uh, I, I laughed because I just like understand. Yeah, no, I found you guys. That's how I found the Try Guys too, to be fair. <laughs> <Similar> content. <laughs> yeah, that's how I found... Um, uh, Sugar Pine Seven. Like that's how I find all the greatest hits. Or when I'm really sad and like don't don't want to leave my house for any reason, and then I go down on the content. Did we that cheer has- you up? Oh my god, we're here now. <laughs> I look back at it. Uh, like some episodes, I think are hilarious, and then other ones, I'm like, I thought this was so funny at the well, time. Well, it was but I'm so like- great because um, Mamrie and I forever have been trying to figure out like a simple concept <laughs> that was easy to produce that wasn't scripted that felt like us being genuinely around each other like that sort of thing and you guys were doing it I was like this is perfect I love this I relate to these people they're not putting on like front it's not like you that's what I don't get like it literally is just us trying products right but we just don't have a three camera setup I say this in front of two cameras right now (laughs) (laughs) no but that's like even now when I'm filming my stuff now I just edit it a lot and do a lot of like punch-ins and stuff well that's what I used to do and now I'm just like I'm literally like headbutting my head. <laughs> um, no, I always said that I was annoyed with the whole back to Glover and me not making any money that I'm like, I could have made this show in my living room. No one's yeah. watching it because it has three cameras. No, it's just like, yeah, this, the tone of it was just very relatable and very cool. And it didn't feel high production, but it also didn't feel like you're shooting on an iPhone. Like it just felt like, oh, this is very digestible. Yeah. Um, so what was your first impression of Jarrett? <laughs> <laughs> So this podcast is a special edition. It's uh-huh. five hours long. Um, it was so funny because he started at this, like they wanted him more polished and because okay. like clever TV was very like young, like pop they, culture. It used to be blah, like blah. Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez. Yeah. So it was like very, like they made Jared be not what Jared is. And also he has so <laughs> many different, like he's like, very much a chameleon. I feel like that he's a mood him. ring. He is a different color every day. And I always tell that I'm like, some days you'll come in looking like a lumberjack. And then other times he's like in a robe. And I'm like, What's <laughs> yeah. going on? no, on my music, he'd literally come in and be like totally depressed. Then come in one day. We'd be like, where's Jared? And they're like, he's studying law in the corner of the green room right now. So, which <laughs> makes like, my what? first impression the weirdest, because now I would never in a million years ever say this. Literally was just, he was like frat boy. 
Oh, like obnoxious yeah. frat boy, and yeah. I did not like him. That's I my- don't even know if I've told him that, and now I like <laughs> love him so much. But it was like so, just like mm-hmm. him, kind of like someone was giving them like kind of like loose general guidelines, and then he was playing into it. And I think it was like just a job for him, yeah. so he was like being kind of an asshole and just like <laughs> like whatever. I'll say what they want me to say because yeah. that'll. I don't know, but it's so funny because I remember really not liking him. I think I also was like bitter that they had like canceled everything on Clever TV oh, and yeah, kind of screwed yeah. everyone that works there. Yeah, no, but that'll play into that for sure. Then it was just kind of like, what? And then Who now I'm like, oh my God, literally they're two of the funniest people I've ever met in my time. Oh, that was my first impression. I think Jared was wearing like a black tank top and he drove away on a motorcycle. I was like, this piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember when I started being like, and because he always used to come in and talk to us too. And he was very like, he chatty like, Kathy. Hey, just got back from therapy. And we'd be like, Hello, I'm Lily. <laughs> but it was always like very endearing. And then I, I don't think it took long for us to be like, oh, wow. He's yeah. a, like, I just. He's, he's a unicorn of I've a I've never met anyone like him. He's the coolest person ever. Uh, he is a goof troop uh, in one character. Um, okay, we're going to take one more quick break. And when we get back, we have a bazillion Twitter questions for you, Lily, if you don't mind answering them. Sure. You've heard of the internet. No. Nah. We'll be right back with more Lynn Larson on Not Too Deep. Not Too Deep. You know, Jack, for many of us, the day does not start until we get that morning energy boost. You know what I'm talking about? I think you're talking about coffee. Yeah, I am. And now there's a new way to enjoy your daily cup of joe thanks to Cafe Monster. Available in vanilla, mocha, and salted caramel. Cafe Monster is shaking up the ready-to-drink coffee category with indulgent gourmet coffee that's only 190 calories. And not to mention with 150 milligrams of caffeine from coffee beans, B vitamins, and coffee fruit extract, Cafe Monster offers a simplified energy blend that contains a third less sugar than the leading national brand. In fact, it's 100 fewer calories per bottle in the competition, but you'd never know that by tasting it. Instead, you get all the same feel and flavor as your local coffee house, and you don't have to wait in line, you don't have to interact with other humans. Humans. And they've got three great flavors. There's vanilla, there's mocha, salted caramel. They're all fantastic. Mocha is my personal favorite. It does taste like chocolate milk. I could be a vanilla girl on certain days, but well, they're all, I mean, they're, to me, it's just delicious. All just of it. Give it, a, give it a shot. Try it out. Cafe Monster. Chill it down. Shake it up. Enjoy. No, not too deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by Green Chef. They are a USDA certified organic company that includes everything you need to easily cook delicious meals that you can feel good about. Green Chef recipes are quick and easy with step-by-step instructions, chef tips, and photos to guide you along the way. They send a wide variety of organic ingredients and imaginative new recipes each week delivered right to your door. With Green Chef, it's easy to maintain a specialty diet and enjoy exciting new options. Their pro meal plans include paleo, vegan, vegetarian, keto, gluten-free, omnivore, and carnivore. Green Chef's expert chefs design recipes with thoughtfully sourced ingredients and gourmet flavor that you typically only find in restaurants. Green Chef thinks dinner should be planned around your life and not the other way around. So let Green Chef do the meal planning, shopping, and prep for you week after week. Switch up your meal plan and change the box you're getting whenever you want. I, as you guys know, love subscription box services for cooking because it cuts down on waste. And Green Chef is amazing because like they said, they have so many specialty diet plans, which is fantastic. Whether you're a carnivore, whether you're a vegan, they have you covered. Plus, it helps you venture out of your normal cooking comfort zone. And even if you don't even have a comfort zone cooking because you don't do it, they get you started. And for $50 off your first box, you guys can go to Green Chef dot us slash grace that's green chef dot us slash grace okay we're back okay um lily you've answered these two questions that so i ask every I? <laughs> well um <laughs> i'm gonna get to the two questions i ask every single guest that's on the podcast and because you've been on the podcast before um you've answered these before but maybe they've the changed, changed yeah. um okay so the first question is who alive or dead would you most want to throw cold spaghetti at can I like make like a metaphorical person that's yes. just defy? Yeah, you can say a corporation for that sure. That feels appropriate. I was going to say if we didn't answer defy, I mean, that we would have be- like some specific people, but like I don't feel like that is appropriate. That's a to general say. I'm gonna like be nice. yeah, Spidey Man, yes. Spider Web of cold spaghetti. But, like, like, could it be something a little worse than that? 
Could there be like some sauce in there as well? Yeah, I Isn't mean, usually there can be some. Noodles? Yeah, who knows what kind of like food allergies they have? That's true. Or if they have a gluten issue or something. <laughs> um, okay, the other question <laughs> that I ask every single guest is to tell us your worst pants shitting story. But you can only use three words or small phrases or some sort of like hybrid. Uh, mine is college jogging front lawn. <laughs> I I because I even feel like the last time I answered it was like kind of like a. Like you it might not, never it actually, be, it didn't actually happen. It was like an almost scenario. That's what you can do a close call. I think it was literally the three words last time or almost earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll take that. I feel like that is that truly mine day, every but, day though. <laughs> um, late night, uh, I'm going to consider late night one word, even though I, you can use it. You can use little like the, the high phrases. Yeah. yeah. Um, late night expired SpaghettiOs. Oh no! Wait, <laughs> I thought spaghetti was last forever. I thought those was like apocalypse foods. They don't. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh god, that's my whole plan that's for when like the world. A whole another story is mostly. I don't know how much uh, pantsing there was, but it was um, whew, so much throwing up that I and I've I've alcohol allergies. Like I've thrown up a yeah. lot in my life. This was not. This was different. This was oh, control. man. I love spaghetti I tried to, like, suck it up and go do a shoot for our show, Get <gasps> Jacked, which is a fitness show. Oh, yeah. That was Jared's, like, and brainchild. And Aaron was driving us there, and it was, like, 8 a.m., and I literally had to have to pull over three times on the way oh. to throw up, and then I couldn't do it. I stayed in her car for the whole hour shoot, threw up the whole, like, just kept getting out and throwing up, and then she had to do it all by herself. Because of spaghetti Yep. All right. Well, you know, Uh-oh. we're all thriving in our own ways. <laughs> awful. I don't even like SpaghettiOs. It was just that I was like really hungry when I got. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I didn't have anything in my kitchen. Then it was that. I'm pretty was sure that I have like don't a break in case of emergency. No. like SpaghettiOs. No. In my <laughs> Find an alternative. <laughs> okay, let's get into these Twitter questions. Um, we got an immediate response from um, Jocelyn Davies. Um, she asked, would she like to have pudding or hands? <laughs> She's only asking this because someone asked. It was, What's the pudding thing? I, oh, because there's I just, a lot of questions love, about pudding. I love pudding. You love pudding. But it's like never something I really vocalized. And then we did a cheat day about pudding. Uh-huh. And it was like, I was just losing my shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like specifically yeah, the Magnolia know. Bakery banana pudding. Oh, I've never experienced. What do you mean? I don't think about pudding. <laughs> as an adult I guess because I guess I don't like seek it out all the time but then that was why like it had never really come up and then we do oh. this episode and it was like I got so talking about another type throwing up because I ate too much like, pudding this whole episode <laughs> well I think pudding is a little off pudding to me because it has an identity yeah, crisis it's not solid and it's not soup it's in between salad and soup, and what? that makes How? me confused. In, in what world is salad involved? Here? No, solid. Oh! <laughs> it's it not like, a solid like food. super salad. I was like, no, Grace. That's, that's all not you. super salad. Um, um, no, but I think that's, I don't, I like, I don't know. It just tastes like congealed. I don't like anything, so it is weird that I would like something with a semi-strange texture, and like, I also love like flan. Oh, like so you, got, you know your texture. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, good for you. But yeah, um, that literally was a question someone put in a Q&A that we did like four years ago. And we like read it and I paused and I go, how much? <laughs> <laughs> you considered it honestly. <laughs> it was like, is it like you're taking away my hands or like I just can't use them while I eat the pudding? Like what are the, yeah, what are the you, logistics involved? If your hands get taken away, how are you going to eat that pudding? I can, you can't put it through a straw. That's why it's confusing. <laughs> you can put soup through a straw. Ew. <laughs> yeah. No, that is gross. That makes soup gross. <laughs> well, also, like, would, most soup noodles, I feel like, would But also, if you have tomato soup, but you it ate like, it through it a straw. If it was a cream-based soup, then maybe. Well, that's just, tomato soup through a straw is just a Bloody Mary at the end of the day. <laughs> well, with vodka. <laughs> yeah. That's how I drink all my soups. Sauces. With vodka. <laughs> 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 oh, God. This has gotten very theoretical. If Jared was here, we would have two more hours of conversation about the origin of soup. <laughs> okay. Someone wants to know, what's the worst emoji ever created? Is there one that you dislike? There's not one that I, like, hate, but I feel like there's a lot that I'm like, why does that exist? But, like, you won't give me... If you... What's the worst... Okay, let me expand this a little bit. What's the worst emoji response that you could get? Or, like, let's even go emoji list, like, the worst text response. 
I mean, the go-to is K. All right, that that was immediately what came Yeah, out. like this KK, it's fine. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it was one in a period. Oh no, my mom doesn't understand text etiquette, uh-huh. so like I'll always think she's mad, but like she just doesn't get it. Oh no, my mom thought LOL meant lots of love for like two years, so I mean, she'd be like, "Grandma fell in the shower." <laughs> LOL, mom. <laughs> and then my dad, for whatever reason, I was be like, "Well, that could be kind of interchangeable." Maybe. Yeah. No, she no, didn't know like, until my brother and I came home, and we were like, "You know, LOL means laughing out loud." She's like, "I had no idea." Uh, but then my dad, I don't know where he developed this. My dad ends every text with an ellipsis, so it's the most for like foreboding thing ever. He just. And my like, mom will do that a lot too, but it's always like in, but she won't do it for ones that it actually would make sense for. It's ones that it's like, so are you mad? Like what's like, yeah. she'll be like, I guess that's okay. Da, da, da. No, my and dad like, will do it for Is like, it okay? I don't know. My dad will do it for like, hey, hon, hope you're having a great day, dot, dot, dot. And I'm like, what does like, he but want? <laughs> what does he really want me to do today? Oh, God. Um, no, I just do think there's so many random food emojis, though, that shouldn't exist. Yeah. Is there one that doesn't exist? Wait, do you know? I hope that you're not one of these people because I definitely use it all the time and I always feel very personally attacked. But Uh-oh. people like don't like the crying face emoji, like the laugh crying. Oh, laugh crying. Um, I think I not. I don't feel either way about it. I use it like it's definitely my most used. Like I, uh, three crying emojis is like how I respond to something that I think is funny. I think that's totally I appreciate a crying face emoji more than LMAO. Oh, I don't do that. Because I'm uh, never laughing my ass off. I've always been a ha-ha girl. <laughs> I'll do like three ha's. Oh my God. I, yeah, I'll do three ha's when it's really I funny. Like, I have a friend at college that was like trying to like talk to this guy Uh-oh. and he said her, he said her something and she sent back and it auto-corrected to like a lot, which that happens to me sometimes too. <laughs> It was like, ha! <laughs> oh, wait. She tried to send back a couple ha ha's yeah, and auto like, It's like, it's just like, oh no, too much laughter. Too much. <laughs> and, it was it, and it was something that like, wasn't funny. So I was gonna, like, <laughs> like, but also, uh, okay. I mean, indirectly, that's a great way to shut down a text conversation with someone that you don't want to be having it with. Just she overlap. She did, though. And she goes, no, I just, I just wrote everything. <laughs> oh, I love, I mean, I kind of am going to use that now in the back uh, pocket when I talk to someone that I don't want to continue a conversation with, but I'm too like pussy to like row. cut it down. Yeah. But I'm like, ha 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 um, <laughs> That's because for, for a year we were like all doing different. We're like, so what do you think he interpreted it as? Was it like, ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, speaking of that, someone wants to know, what is she looking for in a dude? I'm interested in what her type is. TBH. Well, if you ask Jocelyn, she always goes, well, he. Oh, and she describes your type as? Yeah, she goes, well, he was probably an athlete, preferably football. But like he was the quarterback (laughs) because he had to be smart too, maybe wide receiver. And then he got injured and then he had to get into business or maybe he still works in the sports field, but doing something else. And like literally we'll go into this very, very hyper specific situation. I feel like I don't always end up liking what my type is. Sure. But like my type, I would say is very like, like frat boy jock really but i think in recent years i've transitioned more to like i like a good beard but i like it visually i don't really want to make out with a beard it just kind of hurts seems itchy yeah um yeah but i think no i think just someone that doesn't annoy the shit out of me is pretty much the type (laughs) that's that's a great way to describe your type (laughs) which i have not found yet so (laughs) i mean in los angeles it's just so easy to date here (laughs) <laughs> the few times I find it, I'm like, oh, my God, I don't hate them. It's like, oh, I'm not looking for a relationship. Or, oh, um, I'm in a relationship. Yeah. I'm like, okay. What? Or, oh, oh, they're in a relationship. <laughs> no, know. literally. That's I'm like, I'll be, like, talking to someone. I'm like, oh, this is going great. It's like, oh, I have a girlfriend. I'm like, what do you mean? What? <laughs> when why? did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I wouldn't. Why would I be talking to you right no. now? There's it's never no that reason. I'm initiating things with guys with girlfriends. It's always the opposite. Oh, and then no. I'm like, oh, who's this? And then I'm like, I'm not going to look them up on Facebook. I won't be creepy. And then, like, when I do, I'm like, maybe I should have because then I would have saw that they were married. Oh, <laughs> no. God. Not really. I, Social media is fun. Exaggeration, but kind of not. Uh, okay, so I want to know if you had a children's book written about you, I what you were would you say if you had a children's book? If you had a, if you had a child, <laughs> what would it be like? Um, if you had a children's book written about you, what would it be called? And some, and they said, no follow up question, of course. Uh, what are normal children's books called? I think that's a great title. <laughs> <laughs> I would buy that children's book if it was titled What Are Normal that's Children's really Books? Like, called? I don't fucking know. 
<laughs> what are normal? I mean, like the I like can't even remember any like that I used to pop on pop. Yeah, like, yeah, but it's like those are so specific to what the it is. Yeah, like unless I had a story in mind. Those are just Dr. Seuss. <laughs> I feel like it's like the crafty worm. I don't know. Is that a Marcel the Shell? Yeah, Marcel the Shell. Shell with Is that a show? On. It was a video that they turned into a children's book. Oh, but it's always like an anthropomorphized Jenny, like Jenny animal. Slate. Is the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Slate. Okay. Um, your favorite Katy Perry album. <laughs> are you still a huge Katy Perry stan? Someone walked into my apartment the other day and they go, "So you really like Katy Perry?" I was like, "I feel like it, I don't realize that I do have a lot of stuff, but it's more <laughs> that I just like." there's Katy Perry things that I've acquired over the years when I was a big fan. Uh-huh. And then there's other things that I acquired that I didn't care about. So like, if I move, like I throw away and yeah. I like, don't have that many things that are like out on display. Right, so right. I have a few things. I'm like, Oh, I guess that does look weird. Um, I wouldn't <laughs> say I'm like literally like in college. It was like, Oh my God, I'm obsessed with her. Yeah. This is amazing. Now it's like, I, love her music it's all great yeah you're more um, of like an adult now and yes been in i was the like now i am 28 so i would hope that i'm not just totally obsessed but it's funny that i did i then after all those years of being obsessed with her i met her twice last year whoa <laughs> i was like oh so finally did she remember you the second time oh no no <laughs> definitely not no i get that yeah but she told me i was funny i was like so this means i'm a comedian now right <laughs> <laughs> you can add that to your twitter bio but now. i'm teenage dream hands down okay yeah that's a good one um when did your dr pepper addiction start I actually don't know. Um, and is it still a real thing? Yeah, I cut back a lot. I, I literally was drinking probably six a day. Because well, they awesome. had them in the refrigerator at work all the time. So I would just be like stressed and be like, I need to get up and like go like do something. And it's like going to get a drink is yep. like a nice like going away from your desk kind of situation. Yeah, I totally get and that. And I feel like just when I'm anxious, I'll just like, I it's need something to It's an activity that, like that you're exactly. doing. Yeah. yeah. So, and it just tastes good. So yeah. then I was drinking like thousands of calories of <laughs> empty <laughs> calories a day. But um. I probably drink like two ish, two or three, maybe. That's good. Now and then, um, in high school though, like literally every day before high school, I would go to McDonald's for a ninety nine cent <laughs> fountain beverage, <laughs> large Dr Pepper. <laughs> Actually, I believe they had Mr Pip at the time. Oh, they changed at one point. But um, so I, I definitely. Sorry, my phone is. I'm blowing up. No worries, Jocelyn. Jocelyn um, is upset that she's. She, here. I was upset that I didn't answer her phone call the other day. She has. I called you because I'm on my way home, and I didn't think I would be able to talk to you tomorrow. And I just miss you, and I haven't talked to you in a few days. Oh, so I, like, oh. I know. Is there separation anxiety? No, absolutely. Because you guys, I'm sure you. It's in. It's impossible to anticipate what it's like when you're not seeing each other every single day for eight hours well, a day. Honestly, in an even office. I feel like back to like back to the original question that you asked me at the very beginning of this, <laughs> which was like, what, was it hard to make that kind of plunge? Yeah, it was never about the YouTube channel, and like, I was like, okay, if I'm a flop, that'll suck. But like, my backup plan was like, I'll just edit for people. Sure, and like that was. A very and I had people already lined up that I'd reach out. It was like, hey, do you need any help? Because I'm yeah, available. I was gonna reach out to you and be like, hey, oh, yeah, literally, I saw you two years ago. Though. I was like, like, I'm figuring my shit out. I mean, a like, lot maybe. of I feel like people that watch us even know that I edit, but a lot of like the YouTuber like just people I know in real yeah. life don't necessarily because like they don't. Watch they assume you work for a corporation, and so the corporation has editors or whatever. I didn't know that you had the Lil um the Lil's lens. <laughs> Your Instagram, yeah, that's just genuine, beautiful photography Thank you. that you do. Yeah, what camera do you use? The one uh, I I got an ADD for myself for Christmas last year. Okay, it took, I've I've been like kind of like prepping for the apocalypse, aka yeah. for just me leaving. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, okay, well, um, let me buy things while I do have some kind of money. Sure, so sure. then if I'm totally screwed, at least I have everything I need that yeah. I wouldn't like not be able to film a video if I had to. Yeah, but um. Yeah, I don't know. I bought it and then I, I've always liked photography, but like I don't really know anything about cameras. People are like, oh, what was your F-stop? I'm like, I don't fucking know. It's great. But I fucking love Photoshop. So I'm oh. like, if I can take, I'll use automatic settings. Yeah, like, yeah. I'll take mediocre pictures. But if you could take a mediocre picture, you could always make it better. There so you go. it's like, I just like editing a lot. So it is just a nice hybrid. And I plan on doing, my goal was to do one picture every day. That didn't happen. Well, it's what's up there right now is beautiful. And I had no idea until Diane did a bunch of like quick research for this episode and like put that in it's there. Like, and I was like, wait a minute, what? From I, Korea? I, yeah, from Korea. Yeah. We outsource. <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. 
Yes, we I do. Love it. I just remember seeing her post one day that she moved. I was like, wait, what? Uh, I, same. Same. Oh my God. <laughs> That's amazing. But she, uh, yeah, she wrote that in notes. I was like, wait a minute. I looked it up this morning. I was like, holy shit. I didn't know no, this yeah, one existed. And honestly, my goal was like, because I, I've always like literally I am the go-to like I make people's like I've made Jocelyn's sister's birthday like her kid's birthday invitations for the last few years like oh, Photoshop so has fun. always been like just my side like yeah one of back when I was like even just like an associate producer nothing was like I didn't have any real responsibilities one of the like evergreen things I did for Clever was it was originally going to be like if celebrities didn't have hair and I was photoshopping them all to be bald <laughs> but then we didn't want people to get offended and think it was like uh -huh. any kind of cancer situation oh, yeah, so I was yeah. like what can we do so then I I turned them all into cone heads. <laughs> and there is a video that exists. Oh. And it's literally Dana hosting a full <laughs> written story just referencing these pictures of cone heads that I made. So, wow. yeah. So, um, I made the little lens just so I could have, like, oh, and also it was kind of when I realized that I wasn't getting my channel back. Oh. So, I was like, well, I guess I'll find another creative outlet. <laughs> and then it was also like, maybe I could get some side income for that because yeah. like a lot of brands will ask you to post like product shots right, or yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not going to do well. I need to be in it if right. it's going to be on my Instagram. Right, right, right. But if it's my photography Instagram, I don't really, that's, awesome. that's like, I'm not in any of them because I'm not self timering the pictures. So well, I'm like, could be a good alternative. And it's just fun to have something to like. It's super cool. I highly recommend people check it out if they're like me and had no fucking clue that this other Instagram existed. Um, well, we have reached the end of the podcast, but before you leave, we're going to give you the gift that we give every guest that makes time for us <gasps> is a personalized fortune cookie just for you that you are more than welcome to open up and read, hopefully into the microphone on camera. So, wait, do you, do you, like, uh, what? As opposed to leaving? And yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can film yourself opening it later in your car and like send it to us. That'd be Please great. Please ASMR shit. You were really close. <laughs> anyway. I forget what our fortune was. The fortune is... <laughs> This is the strangest tasting fortune cookie I've ever eaten. Also, if you want dry mouth, just try these fortune cookies. <laughs> Fuck, are you okay? Uh, I don't eat the fortune cookies. I didn't advise it. Jack was the one said it was okay. <laughs> Swallowed it like a pill. Okay. <laughs> so my fortune is a Coors Light brand deal where you actually get to keep the money you make is in your near future. No, my near and dear future. <gasps> Comma Lily Marston. Oh, I mean, wait, it's the universe I predicting it. That. I've gotten a few care packages and actually fun fact, they invited me on. Um, From Coors Light? Yeah. <gasps> They, and they sent me a note that um, even called them course lattes, which I really appreciated. That's but um, so no, they invited me to do something. And it was too, they invited me to something this year and I couldn't go. It was like some retreat that they partnered with someone. Sure. And it was super cool. And it was really sad. Like two years ago, they reached out. They were like, we have this summit we're doing where you go hiking through the Rockies. And I was like, I think you have very much misunderstood my brand. And <laughs> I was like, oh, I think I'm unavailable. It was literally like a mountain climbing trip. And I was like, I understand oh. the parallel, but no. I understand. But they recently sent me a custom snowboarding jacket. That's great. Do you great. snowboard? I don't. I don't. No. <laughs> it holds course lights. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, Lily, where can people find your channel? It's quote new, but it's been there. Where it's can people find existed you? It's for a while. Um, it's called the Lil's channel, but I think if you just search my name, it'll come up. It's like okay. the only one. Um, and then Lily underscore Marston on Twitter and Instagram. Awesome. Uh, if you guys haven't already, please go check out Lily. <laughs> go support this new independent contractor, oh content and wait, creator. Also, not to interrupt you, but soon, um, based on one of the tweets we got i think that we are going to be filming a bob ross tutorial <gasps> yes i really want to do this so very that badly feels like it needs to happen and honestly i think it might happen before this episode comes out so yeah. you should check it might be up it might be up um thank you again lily for making time jocelyn we'll see you when we you see bitch. you can't believe you didn't <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next time on another episode of not too deep goodbye too deep too deep too deep not too Not deep. Too deep. Chris Helbig. Cafe Monster is shaking up the ready-to-drink coffee category with indulgent gourmet coffee that's only 190 calories. Available in vanilla, mocha, and salted caramel. With 150 milligrams of caffeine from coffee beans, B vitamins, and coffee fruit extract in every bottle, Cafe Monster offers a simplified energy blend that contains a third less sugar than the leading national brand. But you still get all the feel and flavor of your local coffee house. And I have tried the mocha... It is delicious. You have to try it. It tastes so good. Cafe Monster, chill it down, shake it up, enjoy.
Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer and directed by Jack Ferry. Producer and editor, Melissa D. Mons. Writing by Diane Kang. Production assistance by Katrina Henning. Post-production sound by Chris Henry. And an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. 